Hi everyone, it's Shaw from Scrap Secrets and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is part of the Team Tiny July 2022 hop and the theme for this month is to create a card using multiple companies' products. So I'm going to be using Honeybee Stamps Woodland Babies stamp set as well as Lawn Fawn's Forest Backdrop die set and there's going to be a couple other things I'm going to use as we go through the video. The first thing I'm going to do is stamp these two adorable little bears onto a piece of 110 pound white cardstock. I'm using Jet Black Ink by Lawn Fawn as well as my Stamp Perfect from Hampton Arts. I'm stamping that down a couple times and then I'm going to let the ink dry before I start Copic coloring. So I'm going to be using a variety of E markers. The first one that I used was actually really dry. I think that was E15. I had, there's like no ink left in it. So I do need a new one, but I'm using E, I know it's 57, I think 37, I think 29. There's four different E markers and I think, I don't, they're they're not labeled on the caps so um you should just be able to see them in the video and if I remember I can I'll put them in the description box below I'm not great with Copic coloring I'm still practicing still learning so I am just doing what I feel like is natural to me so I'm going in with my lightest color and shading in where the areas would be the darkest, then picking up one of the darker colors and pulling that color out to create that shadow, which would be anywhere where the two objects overlap each other. So if the bear's leg is overlapping, I would create a shadow on the other leg. I put some stuff there where the baby bear is on the either the mom or dad bear. Um, shading underneath that so I'm just doing what feels natural to me or what looks natural to me and then you'll see with the lighter colors I'm taking larger strokes to add a little bit more of the fur in there and to give it a little bit of texture so while you're watching me color I wanted to talk to you a little bit about team tiny if you are new here welcome i hope that you enjoy the hop it is a hashtag driven hop so you're going to click on the hashtag in the video title or go ahead and type it into the search bar on youtube and everybody who has participated in this hops video will show up there should be about 15 people we usually have about 15 people sign up each month has a different theme for the hop so if you are interested in joining us i will leave a link to the facebook group in the description box we'd love to have you the only requirements are having a paper crafting youtube channel with less than a thousand subscribers once you hit a thousand you do graduate from team tiny and we do have one graduate this month who is also hopping along with us enjoying her last hop yvette congratulations for hitting a thousand so back to the card, I am going to be finishing off. I've finished coloring both of the bears. I added a little bit of R20. I know R20 was one of them. I think the cheeks was R were R20 and then R21, I believe, were the ears. Added a little bit of that in. And now I'm taking my white gel pen and going over the little dots on their faces as well as putting the white back into the eyes and coloring in the tail a little bit because I got some Copic marker on there. I fussy cut these images out and now I'm taking a brush and putting eyelashes back on to the one eye on the bear because they were on the right hand side and there was just no way I was fussy cutting those out. I'm also going around the edges of the image with that brush marker to just kind of get rid of that white core. So now we're moving on to the stencils and I'm using stencils from Kindred Stamps and I believe this is one of the ones, and this isn't one of the ones that came in a box, sorry. This one is just a regular one. I'm not sure if it's still available or not, but you could use any type of tree stencil you have. I liked this one because there were two different sets of trees, so I wanted to do different depths and perspectives on there so I'm going and using the rustic wilderness in the background with the taller ones and then for the shorter ones I am going to use pine needles for that so this comes with the masks so super easy to line up lined up the mask so I could see where I wanted the trees put the piece that I cut out over top of it just to see how everything was going to look, make sure there weren't any awkward gaps or anything like that. 
lined up the stunts the mask and then put the stencil down where I wanted it using my we are memory keepers board um with the with the magnetic ruler to hold that stencil into place I could have easily used pixie spray but I didn't really want to so you see I'm going in with one of those smaller blending brushes that I got from Amazon which I'm not sure how crazy I am about them but I'm using that pine needles to go ahead and add that first row of trees and you see it moved a little bit you're not going to be able to tell in the end it's really just background trees so once I have everything inked up to the way I like it, I am going to take the stencil off and then we are going to use the masks, which this is one of the reasons that I love the stencil so much because it comes with the masks and that makes in them great to use for a lot of different techniques so you can see i'm lining everything up seeing how it looks again i just keep doing this over and over again seeing how the card fully looks together i will go in and fill in the little spot down at the bottom left hand corner with a little bit of distress oxide but i'm going in with the mask and adding some zig two-way glue pen to it going over the trees so that I can do the sky. So again, this is why it's so great for techniques because you can use this to mask off your images. You don't have to cut, figure out how to cut out a mask or try to do any fancy kind of taping. This works fantastic. Now, if you saw one of my last videos, um, or I, I might not even, actually, it's not even posted yet. I recorded it before, but I'm way ahead of schedule this month um, on my videos. You'll see it later on this month, but I really need to throw away that Zig Jue glue pen. It really doesn't work now. I'm using two colors of blue Distress Oxide. The first one is Prize Ribbon, and then I'm also going to use Chip Sapphire. Prize Ribbon is the lighter blue, so I'm gonna go over the entire background with that, and then go over just the top, towards the top with the Chipped Sapphire. And I'm also going to come in with some Black Soot Distress Oxide and just do the edges of the card with that because it just darkens and deepens up that um, chipped sapphire and gives it a little bit more definition. So you can see here I'm adding that chipped sapphire into it. Uh, you do have to be careful because this stencil is very, very intricate. You can see how sharp these points are. It's a pain in the butt to clean off. I do have to say that between the stencil and the mask. It's very, very difficult because there's so many jagged edges. It kept getting caught on my uh, towel when I was doing it. But there you go. I'm adding that black soot distress oxide and you can see how it just darkens up that chipped sapphire and just makes it look a little bit more like a black or a, a midnight sky. So I'm going to put that mask back on and I'm going to use MFT's Sweet Tooth Pigment Ink with some water and a fan brush and I'm going to flick on the white to make it look like stars in the background. But you can see I made sure that I put a scrap piece of paper down and masked off the bottom because I didn't want to get anything on the bottom trees just on the top. And here comes my favorite part when you remove the mask and it's really starting to look like a scene. Well, next we're going to glue the bear down to the very front piece. And I cut that front piece out of a scrap piece of cardstock that I found from my bin. I don't think that I we talked about that in the beginning. That was from the Lawn Fawn set and I was going to originally do there's little tree dies in there that you could layer up but I just loved the way these diff, all different shades of green looked so I just put a little bit of glue at the bottom lined it up put the bear down on top of it because we're going to make a shaker card a little bit differently than I usually do um I don't remember if the other video of me making a shaker card has gone up yet I don't think it has I can't remember. I'm, I've done so many videos and I'm so out of order this month. But I am using some fun foam and cut them down into about quarter inch strips and gluing two of them together. I don't have foam tape and I found that this is really working for me. I figured out the trick to it. Glue two pieces together, let them dry. Before I was not letting them dry, 
put them to the side, let them dry, went and had dinner, came back downstairs, and now I'm getting ready to attach everything. I'm adding some ATG to the back of the card, or the card front, and then we are going to put down the acetate. So it is behind that front image not in front of it. Some people would put that in front. I decided not to because I feel like the sequins and everything would get stuck in between the bear and the trees and stuff. So again, I am using that same glue to glue the barrier for all of the shaker pieces. So I'm going to glue the top and the bottom pieces first, even though it looks like I'm going to do the sides. I'm not. I'm going to glue the top and the bottom pieces first, and then we are going to fit the other two pieces in. But you don't want to go ahead and throw away those pieces from the side that you cut off that you doesn't look like you're going to use. I'm actually going to use them to glue to the bottom so that everything is on the same level. If I didn't put anything on the bottom, the bottom would actually be loose and it would look funny, kind of like flap off of the card. This just gives the card a little bit more stability and you'll see what I mean when I go and put everything together. So I'm going ahead and going to put glue down for the side pieces, just making sure that you really can't see anything. I'm trying to go towards the outer edge, but I don't want you to be able to really see it from the sides. I chose the dark blue again. I use this in another project, but because we did a dark blue background, I decided to use the dark blue foam. Here I thought that I could potentially keep that same, you know, use the scrap piece, but I decide, nope, it's too short and I don't feel like trying to piece things together. Let's just cut down the other strip, but then use them on the bottom. So I'm going to make sure all of these pieces fit into there. And the great thing about this is this foam, you can kind of slide down. So if you don't cut it exactly perfectly, you can butt it up against each other so that none of the shaker pieces fall out. You want to make sure that you have a nice seal on wherever that shaker basin that you make is. And there, I'm just gluing those bottom pieces down into place. You don't have to glue them right next to where you created that barrier. You probably want to glue them down more towards the bottom um, so that th that gives the bottom a little bit of stability and dimension. So now we are going to create the shaker pieces or the shaker mix. So I'm using Sparkle Blends and this is Twilight Meadow. And Twilight Meadow has a lot of blues and greens and the black. So I thought that would go perfectly. And then the next one is Shoot for the Stars. And there are stars and moons, which again, I thought would look perfect in this. And there are some black and silver pieces in it. And one of these mixes, it might be the Twilight Meadow has a really cool feature in it and you will see that towards the end. This one is Rhiannon's Moonchild and there are again some really cool pieces in this, the black and the silver. Um, I just added to that and then we are going to add one more at the end when I realize there's not enough um, pieces in there. So I am now going over with that light kale and clay over all of the acetate just to make sure nothing sticks. And then this is clearly in love and I'm just dumping a bunch of the clear pieces in there because I thought that it would look good with it. I did take out that heart piece that was in there. I'm dumping all of that in and then I am going to go ahead and glue the glue on top of the foam because we're going to put that backer piece that we created with the stencils on the back of it. So that's going to be the backdrop, but it's going to look real 3D because it's going to have the foam in between it. So I'm using, this is Honey Bee Be Creative Glue. I don't think I've said that before. This is my favorite glue to use, my favorite wet glue to use. And going to be gluing this down into place. And I am pressing on all of the edges to make sure that we get a really, really good adhesion on it. I don't shake it until I make sure that glue is dry. I left it turned over for a long time. Let that glue dry because you don't want to get the sequins in the glue. Or if any glue is like seeped out or anything you want it to dry so I'm just putting that same glue on the back of the card and putting it onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch 
white note card and now we are getting ready to say that's the end of the card. I'm just making sure that it's pressed down onto the card base because there is so much dimension on it. And now comes the cool part. There are some like the stars that glow in the dark. So I know you can't see it real well. I didn't charge them up a ton, but they look really, really cool. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this hop. If you have comments or questions, please feel free to leave them below and I'll see you again real soon for another video. Bye.